Jessica let go of Brittany's waist and tried grabbing Brittany's shoulders, but obviously Brittany wasn't thinking clearly and she squirmed wildly. Jessica finally managed to get a grip on Brittany's upper arms, but she was no match for Rosie's strength. So Jessica tried to do what Brittany was now chanting. Turn her off! Turn her off! Turn her off! Jessica couldn't reach Rosie's control panel. Brittany's struggling torso and ro um, Rosie's relentless grasp blocked the way. Jessica ran around behind Rosie so she could get to the switch from the other side of the pig. Brittany kept screaming and fighting. Just hang on! Just... T I'll turn her off! Jessica shouted. Jessica reached for the pig's activation switch, but Rosie was significantly taller than the petite teen. Even on tiptoes, Jessica couldn't reach Rosie's neck. Leaping to try to switch the, reach the switch, Jessica failed again. She tried twice more and finally she stopped leaping and instead grabbed a chair. As she dragged the chair over to position it behind Rosie's back, Jessica realised that Rosie had let go of Brittany's arms. She saw Brittany twist to try to pull herself out through the open access door. But not only did her body impede her reach, as soon as Rosie let go of Brittany's shoulders, Rosie got a grip on Brittany's head, shoving her fingers through Brittany, Brittany's tidy, slicked black hair. Uh, Rosie clamped down on Brittany's skull. Brittany's eyes goggled. They swiveled this way and that, looking for escape. Seeing Jessica, she gave her friend a beseeching look. Brittany's face was covered in sweat. In cheerleading practice, they always joked about how cheerleaders never perspired. They glowed. Well, Brittany's face wasn't glowing. It was wet with desperate sweat. Before Jessica could say anything to Brittany to reassure her, uh, Rosie shoved Brittany's head inside the summer carroty. Brittany tried to turn and reach for the doorway, but before she could, it slammed shut with a sucking shh. It was sealed. Jessica stared, her mouth hanging open. She then clamped a hand over her mouth. Her friend was trapped inside Rosie Porkchop. Brittany? Brit? Can you hear me? Jessica shouted. For an instant, the room was silent. Jessica realised her heart was pounding so hard that it felt like the rapid fire beats were thrumming in her ears. Then, past the pounding beat in her head, she heard Brittany's muffled wail. Get me out of here! I'm trying. Jessica yelled. Just hold on! Jessica finished positioning the chair and climbed up on top, on top of it. Brittany kept crying out and yelling. Most of what she shouted was incomprehensible, but Jessica didn't need to understand her friend's words to get her meaning. Brittany was terrified and she wanted out of the pig. Even a moron could figure that out and Jessica wasn't a moron. She wished Brittany would shut up so that she could concentrate, but she understood why Brittany kept yelling. Jessica would have been yelling too if she was stuck inside that thing. I'm working on deactivating Rosie, Jessica shouted. It would help if you would just be so quiet for a few seconds. I know you're scared, but your screaming is like freaking me out. A couple seconds of silence passed, then Brittany shrieked. Being in here is freaking me out. Jessica, in spite of the situation, couldn't help but smile. Leave it to Brittany to be funny in a situation like this. You'll be out in a few seconds, Jessica shouted to Brittany. Jessica concentrated on reaching Rosie's controls. Even on the chair, the control box was hard to reach, but Jessica was finally able to flip the cover open. After she got it open, though, she could tell that the buttons and levers were at an angle that hid them from her view. She would have to go by feel. Reaching, she sought the controls she knew were there. From inside Rosie, Brittany shouted, How much longer? Her voice was even higher than ever, and it had a catch in it. Jessica was sure Brittany was crying. That's enough of that, Jessica told Rosie. Jessica fumbled around, seeking the right button. Instead of a button, though, her fingers activated a toggle switch. Rosie Porkchop jolted so violently that she backed into Jessica's chair and tipped it over. Jessica tumbled to the ground, turning her ankle and whacking her head on the edge of a nearby table. Crap, she snapped, rubbing her head. Then she turned to look at Rosie. She blinked in confusion. Rosie was convulsing. And from inside Rosie, Brittany let out a sound that Jessica had never heard before and never wanted to hear again. It sounded like a cross between a howl and a screech. It was loud, it didn't sound muffled at all, and it was quite clearly the sound of excruciating pain. The only other time Jessica had heard a sound like that was when her neighbour's cat had been run over by a lawnmower. <laughs> Imagine mowing 
Imagine mowing your cat. Oh, God. Uh, before Jessica could even react to her friend's cries, they stopped. Rosie was perfectly still. Oh, my God. Jessica shouted, struggling to her feet. Brittany, can you hear me? Jessica started to pant in total panic. What had happened to Brittany? Rosie went still. Jessica repositioned the chair so she could get a better look at Rosie's control panel. What switch has, had she flipped? Oh no, she flipped to the... No, 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 no. She flipped to the, um, to the spring lock mode, to, the, to the, uh, the animatronic mode, didn't she? I bet she did. Rosie went still. Jessica repositioned the chair so she could get a better, better look at Rosie's control panel. Which, which switch had she flipped? Jessica peered at the controls. Oh, she'd flipped the mode switch from suit to animatronic. Oh my god. Sorry, she muttered. She quickly flipped the switch back to suit. As soon as the switch was moved, Rosie's belly access door op popped open. Yes, Jessica punched the air. She rushed around to help her friend out of the animatronic pig. When she stepped to the belly side of the pig, the first thing Jessica noticed was that the interior of the access door wasn't the silver grey it had been when she last seen it. It also wasn't dry. It was... Is, is that blood? As Jessica watched, a thick red drop detached from the edge of the door and plopped onto the grey rubber flooring. She gaped at it. The hairs on the back of her neck stood up. Her brain was suddenly sluggish. She was having trouble processing what the blood meant. The blood and the fact that Brittany wasn't clambering to get out of the pig was telling her something. Something she didn't want to know. Jessica blinked, then leaned toward the door, ready to help Brittany get out. Brittany! <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Jessica tried to see inside Rosie, but she couldn't. She could, however, see a scrap of denim stuck on a gear near the door cover. A bloody scrap. Jessica cried out and stood, shoving back the chair as she did. In the minutes that followed, she'd have a few co co cogent, cogent seconds in which she wondered if her sudden movement was what reactivated Rosie. Would Rosie have remained dormant if Jessica just sat there silently until help came? Would Rosie have stayed frozen if Jessica had slung off the chair and retreated slowly, stealthily out of the classroom? She'd never know because that's not what she did. She made a loud noise, and she moved suddenly. Rosie's reaction was instantaneous. She reached out, and she grabbed Jessica by the shoulders. In an identical move to the one she used on Brittany, Rosie flipped Jessica upside down and then lifted her into a position parallel to the floor. Je Jessica screamed and then started flailing around. She pounded on the pig's hands. Let me go, Jessica shrieked. Then she just started crying out for help. Help me, she screamed at the top of her lungs, even though she knew she was alone. When she realised how futile that was, she bellowed at Rosie. Stop it! This was just as ineffective. As Jessica fought against Rosie, part of her mind, the part that was still capable of logical thought, tried to figure out what she had done to make the pig grab Brittany and now her. How had she gotten the programming so wrong? As soon as she asked the question, the answer arrived on a fleeting second of lucidity. She'd been typing in the name codes when they'd seen the robotic rat. Right in the middle of that process, Jessica had left what she was doing. When she'd gone back to the computer, she must have flipped the codes. She'd gotten the commands reversed. Whatever she'd programmed Rosie to do to Cindy and Mindy, Rosie would do to Jessica and Brittany. And Jessica and Brittany would be forced to serve Cindy and Mindy. Why hadn't she double-checked her work? Brittany had suggested proofreading... But Jessica hadn't listened to her. Jessica had been lazy, and given that scrap of bloody denim and the complete lack of sound from Brittany, she was pretty sure her laziness had gotten her friend killed. Was the same thing going to happen to Jessica? I hope so. <laughs> she, she resumed fighting the pig for all she was worth, and still she wasn't strong enough to break out of Rosie's grasp. But she had to keep trying. Jessica started screaming, shrieking, wailing, howling, kicking and punching. Whatever rem remnants of poise and grace yet Jessica used to have unraveled with every cater wall and every primal motion she made, Jes Jessica's presence was a thing of the past. But none of that mattered. In spite of all her resistance, Jessica could feel her body slipping again uh, inside Rosie's. 
The rough edges of the belly access door scraped her hips and then her chest before rasping against her writhing shoulders. This could not be happening. As Jessica was crammed into Rosie's belly, she, dis she tried to grab onto Rosie's interior, hoping it would stop her progress, uh, forward progress. When she did, though, her hand slipped off slimy wetness. Jessica gagged and scrabbled for something to grasp, something that would help her disengage from Rosie's determined clench, but her hands couldn't find anything to help her. They just found more squishy warmth, and that now reminded her, uh, that now reminded of her friend. Jessica stopped using her hands to find a way to get free. Instead, she, took, she tried to look out through the opening of Rosie's belly. All she could see, because she was face up, was Rosie's arms and her fiberglass squares of the classroom's ceiling. The bright fluorescent lights shone in her eyes, and she closed them. She opened her mouth and screamed again. Maybe a custodian was around, working late. Not likely, but possible. If there was a chance anyone was close by, Jessica had to keep screaming. So she did. No one came to help. Just as Rosie had done with Brittany, she, was now, she now clamped her hand onto the crown of Jessica's head. She steadily shoved Jessica's head inside the open belly. Jessica noticed that the brightness against her eyelids was disappearing. She opened her eyes just in time to see that her head was passing through the opening of Rosie's belly. Just a couple more inches and her head would be entirely inside. Jessica gulped in air and shrieked louder than ever she ever had in her life. It didn't do any good. Rosie gave Jessica one final shove, and Jessica felt the top of her head rubbing on the access door opening. She turned her head to try to see out through the opening, and that's when she saw. Jessica shrieked again and retched. She closed her eyes tight, trying not to let her brain replay what she'd seen. Brittany wasn't even remotely Brittany anymore. She was just a churned up mass of skin, locks of brown hair, uh, bits of bone, nauseatingly gleaming white tissue, and chunks of minced organs. It looked like Brittany had been pulverised and smeared all over the inside of Rosie's belly. What was left of Brittany was entangled in Rosie's mechanisms, the gears and prongs and rods that were now drawn back against the, the walls of Rosie's stomach. Jessica forced herself to open her eyes, and as soon as she did, she thought she could see jagged shards that her brain told her with pieces of Brittany's bones. She refused to listen to her brain. She couldn't. If she let herself actually acknowledge that she was being crammed into a lethal chamber that had already chewed up her friend, she would lose what was left of her mind. She had to stay focused if she was going to figure out a way to get free. Jessica swallowed down bile, gritted her teeth and started feeling around the interior of Rosie's belly. There had to be some mechanism that would free her. No matter how much she, she searched though, Jessica's groping fingers found little besides gross, stomach-churning wet sponginess. At one point, she closed her fist around what she knew, instantaneously, was a piece of Brittany's intestines. As soon as the pulpy mass collapsed in her fingers, Rosie's interior was filled with an abominable smell. Worse than any nastiest, uh, nastiness some skank might have left in a public toilet. Je Jessica's stomach flipped over in a dry heave. She opened her hand, shifted it, and tried again. This time, she got a hold of one of the sharp rods that were a part of Rosie's hydraulic system. She felt blood trickle from her knuckle and wind its way down the back of her hand. Was that her own blood? Was it Brittany's? Did it matter? Thinking she might find something if she shifted her body, Jessica rotated to her left. Immediately, her continued shrieks crescendoed into high decibel, glass-breaking frequencies. Plastered to the other side, of the animatronic stomach was Brittany's face, looking like it had been peeled from her head and hung on one of the prongs that was now retracted against the inner wall. Oh, sheesh. Still retaining its form with it, and with its bright blue eyes still in their sockets, Brittany's face was a grisly mask. Wow. The mask was bloody at the edges, but otherwise it looked unscathed by the destruction. Rosie's systems had reeked on uh, Brittany's body. Brittany's irises were where they should have been. Her nose held its proper shape, and her new lip gloss, bizarrely, was still in place. Jessica gaped at the face, unable to look away, until the belly access door slammed shut with a very final, very loud whoosh and reverberating clank. Then, all she could see 
with darkness. Jessica's shriek caught in her throat and she, sh and she started to choke. Or was that something else in her throat? Oh God, it was. Something had dripped off of Rosie's mechanisms and fallen down inside Jessica's mouth. It tasted like Jessica threw her head back and forth and spit as hard as she could. She tasted something coppery and salty. Jessica spit some more and tried to move her hand up to wipe out her mouth. At first, her hand got stuck between her chest and a gear, but she got it loose and wiped her palm on her tongue. She felt her stomach royal. She was pretty sure she just swallowed a piece of Brittany's skin. She remembered how sweaty Brittany had looked when she disappeared into Rosie's belly. If her face had been pers perspiring, uh, the rest of her had been too. Jessica thought she'd just tasted blood and sweat. Jessica? Jessica, Jessica's face rose, oh Jessica rose, sorry, I don't know why it's her face. Hello, is anybody out there? I'm inside here, inside the pig, get me out of here. She tried, to, she tried to pound on the insides of Rosie's belly, but she again encountered gears and rods. And she also, yet again, felt way too many of Brittany's squidgy body parts. She stilled her hands and listened. Help me, Jessica, the voice said. Help her? What stupid girl wanted Jessica's help? It was Jessica who needed the help. Jessica opened her mouth to yell at whoever was talking. But then she stopped. Wait a second, she thought. That voice, it hadn't come from outside Rosie. It had come from... Jessica, I think we might have screwed up, the voice said. Jessica's breathing caught. It was Brittany. That was Brittany's voice. She... she wasn't dead? How is that possible? Brit... Jessica whispered. Jessica, Brittany answered. I'm glad you're here. I'm cold. She wasn't dead? How is she not dead? Jessica hadn't taken an inventory of Brittany's parts. She tried not to look at the gut-churning gruesomeness very much at all, but she was pretty sure she'd seen nothing but small annihilated pieces of human flesh, bone and tissue inside the animatronic pig, that and the peeled off face. There was no way Brittany could be alive. No way, Jessica said out loud. For sure, right? Brittany said. Jessica shifted her hips to try to stop a rod from pressing against her foot. She made herself breathe in and out evenly through her mouth. She wasn't going to use her nose again inside this abattoir. Okay, so if Brittany was dead, then why was she hearing Brittany's voice? Just as Jessica had thought, she heard a click. She sucked in her breath. The switch. No, no, not the, not the, in the briefest of instants. Jessica went from thought to nothing but sensation, and the sensation was worse than any pain imaginable. Every nerve ending in her body registered a catastrophic, lethal attack, and then nothing. Jessica, Jessica's consciousness was only darkness, no poise, no grace, no presence. No royalty here. Nothing but blackness. Mindy and Cindy trotted toward the door of the robotics classroom. They were a few minutes early, as they usually were. They couldn't wait to show the class later today what they'd done with the dog animatronic that Mr. Thornton had assigned them uh, to in the sophomore class. Mindy knew Mr. Thornton would let them stand up and talk about it. They were both happy to do that. Both Mindy and Cindy wore red today. It was a total accident. Mindy had on her favourite cordery jumper. I, I don't know how to say that word with a red and yellow frilly blouse. Cindy wore a new red dress her mum had bought her at the, at the mall the night before. It had poofy sleeves, which Cindy had shown off to Mindy when Cindy's mum picked Mindy up to drive them both to school. Totally mag, Mindy had said. She and Cindy weren't too up on... Yeah, she and Cindy weren't too up on high school slang. That must have been one of the reasons they didn't fit in. It didn't matter. They didn't care if they fit in. Mindy pushed on the door to the robotics classroom, but it wouldn't budge. Something was wedged up against it. On the count of three, Cindy asked, turning to her friend. Mindy nodded. One, two, three! The friends heaved their full weight against the door, and it skidded open. A table was in front of it, as though someone had barricaded themselves in. But the room was, as they'd expected it to be, empty. Well, almost empty. 
When they entered the room, the first thing Mindy and Cindy saw was Rosie Porkchop. The animatronic pig stood a few feet from the door, watching them with a happy smile. The pig's curly tail whirled in a spiral. Hi Rosie, Mindy said. Rosie raised her right arm. Both girls stared at her. Uh, Cindy tilted her head. I think she wants to give you her... I think she wants you to give her a high five. Mindy laughed and slapped the pig's hand. Rosie stood, spun in a circle, bowed, then said, Hello, Mindy. Ha. Huh. Mindy raised her eyebrows. How does she know your name? Cindy asked. Mindy shook her head. I don't know. She looked around. Do you think Mr. Thornton programmed her with all of our names? Shifting the animatronic dog that she held, she poked Cindy. You try saying hello. Cindy shrugged. Hi, Rosie, she sneezed. Hi, Cindy. Gesundheit. Cindy laughed. Rosie's voice sounded familiar to Mindy. Why? Hey, Cindy said. Doesn't the sound... Doesn't she sound a little bit like that mean girl? She pulled the tissue from her pocket and blew her nose. Which one? Mindy asked. She and Cindy had encountered more than a few mean girls in this school. Mindy didn't understand at all why people picked on them just for being younger. For that matter, she had no idea why a person's appearance separated them from a certain social circle. The people were people. Kids were kids. What was the problem? The one who's going to be homecoming queen, Cindy said. Brittany? She wiped her nose and crumpled up the tissue. Oh, that one. No, the queen is Jessica. The princess is Brittany. Cindy nodded and her red curls bobbled around her freckled cheeks. Mindy looked at Rosie. Did Rosie sound like Jessica? She decided to see if Rosie would say something else. What are you doing here, Rosie? She asked. I'm here to serve you and Cindy. Rosie said in Jessica's smooth timber. Or timbre. <laughs> wow, Mindy grinned. She turned to Cindy. You're right, it, it is her voice. Cindy nodded. She stepped up in front of Rosie's eager face. What do you mean by serve us? Cindy asked the animatronic pig. Rosie did an awkward little shuffle, then bowed. I am your ladies-in-waiting. I will treat you like queens. I will do whatever you want me to do to help you and make your life easy. Just tell me what you need, please. Ladies? Mindy repeated. There's just one of you. I am your ladies-in-waiting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Rosie repeated. Whoever programmed her needs a lesson in grammar, Cindy said. Mindy laughed. Queens, huh? She giggled. Rosie nodded. Yes, you are queens. You deserve the best. I can't argue with that, Mindy said. Can you, Cindy? Cindy shook her head. She held out her backpack. Can you carry this for me? Rosie nodded happily and took the backpack from Cindy's outstretched hands. She turned toward Mindy. Milady, may I have yours too? Hey, there's the milady. Mindy snorted. Milady, that's hilarious. She gazed at Rosie. Rosie smiled her fixed smile back at her, waiting patiently. Mindy shrugged. Okay, this is getting kind of heavy. She handed the animatronic dog to Rosie. Rosie took it easily. I can handle my own backpack, Mindy said. As you wish it to be, Rosie said. Cindy laughed and did a little happy dance. This is the coolest thing ever. She sneezed again. Gesundheit, Rosie said again. Cindy grinned. I love that. She took out another tissue and honked into it. As she wiped her nose, Cindy looked down. She frowned at the ground. Is that... She pointed at the floor, and Mindy followed the direction of her finger. She saw a drop of something thick and red. Must be paint, Mindy said. Mindy grabbed her, fr her friend's free hand. Together they skipped to the front of the robotics classroom, with Rosie trotting along at their heels. Mr Thornton strode into the classroom as Mindy and Cindy took their seats, and Rosie Porkchop set M Cindy's backpack and the girl's animatronic on the table in front of them and sat down. Mr Thornton paused and raised an eyebrow at the pig. He looked from the pig to Mindy and Cindy and then back to the pig. Did you and, and the other team, um, Jessica and Brittany, trade projects for some? Mindy and Cindy exchanged a glance. Yes, Mindy said quickly. I hope you don't mind. Mr Thornton shrugged. I can't argue with the results you got with... He nodded. Well done, girls, he said. You've tamed the monster, but let me check something. He knelt next to Rosie's neck and flipped a switch. Nothing happened. He reached under her belly, felt around, then gave a tug. Nothing happened. He straightened. Good. Apparently it's been deactivated. What house? Mindy asked. Mr Thornton waved a hand as if the topic was not important. 
Oh, I saw an article last night about the old Springlock suits, part animatronics and part costume for... He pointed at Rosie Porkchop. This was one of them. They were taken out of commission because they were deemed to be dangerous for use by... Apparently sometimes these old animatronics switch modes automatically because of a glitch in the programming, so... He patted Rosie's big pink head. It's so annoying that he, he doesn't finish his sentences. It's so unsatisfying. I knew that the writers did that so that we wouldn't get we would get limited information. But she seems safe right now and clearly you've done a great job reprogramming her. Mindy and Cindy exchanged looks, then smiled at Mr. Thornton. Mindy grinned when Rosie reached an extension of her front foot into Mindy's backpack and pulled out her notepad. Thanks, Rosie, Mindy chirred. Inside Rosie, fused with the interlocking metal structure of the machine's mechanisms, two lifeless, disembodied faces stared at each other. Oh my god! Although the lips on both faces had perfectly applied shiny lip gloss, the mouths guarded by that gloss would never speak again. The two faces would stare at each other in perpetual silence, their features locked in contorted expressions of horrified understanding. Yo! <laughs> that, that is a beautiful ending. That's, that's, that's beautiful. That was a very good story. I like that a lot. Uh, okay. Well, actually, now that I've read all three stories, I have to say, Friendly Phase is undeniably the best book in the series so far. Genuinely, uh, I, I really hope that uh, the prankster could top it, and, and I reckon it probably could too. But um, but this was this all around was amazing stories. Like it was one amazing story after the other after the other. Um, this story in particular, it it might be my favourite of the three. I don't know. I I think Friendly Face was incredible. Actually, yeah, I think Friendly Face was probably my favourite, but. This was so good, and in terms of theories, like, okay, let's, let's talk about theories in a minute, but this ending, like, this last paragraph might be one of my favourite ending paragraphs of all, of all Fazbear Fright stories, like, that's, that last bit is inc incredible, I love the detail of the shiny lip gloss, it's kind of just rubbing it in, that they deserved this, like, they, they properly deserved this, and that's also something that I want to talk about, because, like, the, uh, hopefully you've read Sea Bonnies, but the person in Sea Bonnies didn't deserve what they got. They, they did not deserve what they, they, what they got in the end. But in this, they definitely deserved it. They, 100%, they were just the worst people on, on this, on the face of this earth. Um, okay. Theories. Clearly, this is going to get a lot of praise for Golden Duo, which I actually believe. So that's good for me, I guess. Uh, I, I believe Golden Duo. Uh, and I think this is defining proof that you can have two two people con controlling one animatronic. Um, yeah, no, I, I think I definitely think it is to do with Golden Duo. Uh, law significance, I would say that's the only real law significance we we saw Evan before, but I don't really know if that's that means anything or if it's just a, a name like an Easter egg name that keeps appearing or something. I don't know. I I definitely think it's evidence for Golden Duo, and I really really like the story. It's great. It's the Springlocks. Uh, it's a great idea. This is amazing. Um. So yeah, thank you guys so much for reading with me, guys. You may think the friendly face is over, but it's not. We still have this to go. We have the epilogue. And guys, it's the longest epilogue we've ever had. So it's going to be a good one. And uh, I will see you in that. I cannot wait to, to read it. Uh, so yeah, I will see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>